I just feel like if I don't want to answer your question, why will talk? Nope. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, so we, we define governance in our first class. I mean, uh -huh. like the government is a website specifically devoted to governance in here and it's like how people organize to make decisions. And everything that we get. So who will be considered in these, in these decision making processes? What are you deciding about? Um, what are the outcomes? What are our options? So it's a way of providing structure to an organization, so we're talking about organizations, um, from which everything else follows. So you're laying the foundation, I think, or it can be overhead or underhead, but you're, you're providing a structure within, every, within which everything else sort of falls. So the way that you um, structure your, the governance of your organization will, uh, will inform the way that you design each our practices or the way that you deliver on mission and have your operations and yeah so it's it's sort of the, the foundation for everything else. Alright. Okay. Anybody else? Come um, on. Okay, I'm gonna talk. So I just actually did a presentation on this and it was about governance and about like if something if there's a conflict in the nonprofit, which type of accountability do you use? Do you use legal, do you use performance and etc. So it's all about that. So like something went wrong, what do you do about it? Yeah. That's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> Is there anything else you can think of that's important about governance? It's not about how nonprofits is being governed. It's about how nonprofit is being governed, like who is in charge of strategy planning, what policies are in place, what are the mission guiding nonprofit organizations. Um, the oversight being provided by board directors. And all that, like practices, generally the organization culture, all those are involved in Is anyone here like a governance nerd? Like the anti-governance. Anyone yeah. like governance? Just the board, just the instructor who has a PhD in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at your uh, thesis. Governance and innovation, yeah. I like the positive leadership. Um, I'm a governance nerd. I love governance. Because if you don't figure out your governance, I think you were saying foundation, right? It, if you, the governance of an organization sets the tone of the organization, okay? It's, it's the culture in many ways. It sets the tone for the culture in many ways. So governance to me, is hugely important and there are various ways you can tweak things. So isn't governance also um, making sure that the mission is fulfilled? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's why I said it was interesting when you said about yeah. if there's a problem. Yeah. It's also about uh, what do you want to accomplish yeah. as an organization, right? And Your goals. And if like the mission is it being accomplished then you have to do a strategic plan so you'll match up with your vision. Yeah, and 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 it's interesting because think about strategic planning, for instance, and think about innovation. How well do those two things go together? They should. They should. Yeah? Do they? What usually happens with a strategic plan once it's done? It sits on a shelf. Just Often it just sits on a shelf. Yeah, it's yeah. just there. Really how many organizations, for those of you that are involved in various organizations, how many organizations really make their strategic plan come to life and check in on it on a regular basis? Like every meeting or so. Any that you know of? Yeah, so thinking about strategic planning is also changing. There was a fellow, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy out of Montreal, Canadian, that wrote strategic, an article a long time ago actually now, and strategic planning was, is dead. I'm not sure who it is from Montreal. But... Uh, anyway, look, at, look for strategic planning is dead. So if you Google that. I would tell you that he's changed his tune on it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a guy 
out of Montreal, it's a Canadian, who wrote it years ago, so he was way at the forefront. When you think about, and I'm, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but I think this is a key question, is if you want to be innovative, not only do you need to think about your board structure, but you need to think about your, how you plan for things, how you set goals, how you strategically move to take advantage of opportunities. I forget who said opportunities are really important. How much does a business really even, especially in startup phase, okay, which a lot of nonprofits are basically always in, startup phase, how often do you actually do a written plan and then constantly revisit it and check it and that sort of thing? Okay, so I'll just leave you with that question for okay, now. I'll just highlight um, one of the things we've talked about is when you look at your board makeup, for example, and one of the boards that I'm on right now is uh, making sure we have an innovation person on the board. So there's somebody that's there designated as an innovation um, director. Right. So that you have your accounting, you have your legal, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In this particular case, we have an innovation person who is accountable to us for continuing to move. Nice. I like that. It's one example of how you can build structure that can actually support innovation, right? Yep. Um, if we're saying that the strategic plan just gets done and then it sits there, like, do you think there's an innovative way to change that? So uh -huh. What do you like, think? Well, there probably is. Can so you think of any ways? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably, if you give me an hour. <laughs> okay, think on that, because we're going to get, we're going to, as we go, There'll be opportunities to talk more about that. Yep. So we're talking about strategic plans. Do you think this university is a nonprofit? Do you think it uses the strategic plans? Oh, probably. It's a pretty big institution. Yeah. So I was thinking, like, it's not like none use, like, probably hospitals and universities and colleges even. Yep. They use them like much. Yeah. What I'm saying is uh, to think okay. about innovation mm -hmm. and think about the nature of planning, and how well do they drive together? And the, just think about that for a bit. And because it's going to relate to what may be most important in governance in some way. Can we and our it? case study. Do you remember me talking about management versus leadership? Was, what's the difference between a leader and a manager? Yep. Like this, like boss versus, I think it was boss. boss. Yep. What's there the difference? Yeah. So if you have a manager, what are they trying to accomplish? Change. Keep things the same. Keep things the same because we want to know when we're getting paid. We're looking for efficiencies. What does a leader want to do? Change. So leader and manager are different. Okay. So that's a good thing to think about too. Let's see what's on the next slide. So uh, there's a really good blog, if you haven't discovered it already, by Grant McDonald, who was the director of the, he's retired, but he was the director of the nonprofit leadership program at Dalhousie for many years. He's on our advisory committee. Here. Yeah. And uh, Grant is a huge, huge mentor of mine. I'd say I'm a governance nerd because of Grant, and we're still looking at ways to work together. Um, so he had a blog called Basic, about Yang and Yang and nonprofit governance. And, and basically, he challenges people in this blog to think about what might governance look like if there was more space for the yin. Okay, and I encourage you to re find it on his website. It's just Governing Good and, and read the whole thing. But he talks about, for instance, the idea that we need to acknowledge and not just tolerate, but actually embrace the idea of messy, chaotic, discussion. Okay, that's a fundamental shift in how most, especially larger organizations work, right? Uh, we need different kinds of governance gatherings, not just board business meetings. Okay, so yeah, we received the fin finance report. Yeah, we heard this from the executive director. It, I, I, so many board meetings, people do not ask any questions. It's literally just, yep, yep, yep. How fun is that? Like, is that the kind of board you would want to be on? Do you feel like you're really making a difference when you're just going, yep? Or not even saying, yep, you're just like, mm. 
right? First, seconder, any opposed? No. Okay, moving on. Yeah, that's the, that's the nature of a lot of board meetings within the nonprofit world, right? We had a discussion on this the other day, right? This is what, you guys remember this conversation, right? And it's about what your role is and what you can do on the board. Yeah. And I'm going to talk about a case study where we've been making some fundamental shifts. I am going somewhere with all this. <laughs> um, and the other thing is greater reliance on individual board members' study, reflection, and writing. So individual board members need to take their responsibility as a board member very seriously. There are, you are, if you're on a board, you have a particular role to play in the organization, and it's a very important one. Okay? Uh, and the noticing of outline questions and comments. Are really important. Okay. Um, what kind of problems are we trying to solve in community? Are they neat and tidy? What do we need most to address them? Do you think? Are we dealing with neat, tidy little problems? What are we dealing with? Hmm? Wicked, problems. <coughs> Wicked problems. Yes, that's one of my favorite words. Yes. Anything else? Sorry? Why do the time it would be messy what you're trying to deal with? Or messy, you yes. Factoring volunteer resources and yes. policies outside of your house. Yes. How much of the work that we actually do in nonprofits 